So I want to show anyone who's interested one of the most important steps in uh, installing Delrin bushes into a air-cooled VW front beam. Um, once you have the, the bushings installed, they need to be reamed so that the so that the uh, torsion arms uh, turn freely uh, inside the bushing. The way they come when you buy them, it, you can't even get them in there uh, without reaming them before you put them in. So I've already reamed these, <coughs> but they're still a little tight. This one's this one's a little tight, a little too tight. Like I think it might stick. And this one, I kind of like this one. This one seems to turn a little easier. See how it's a little easier for me to turn, whereas this one's kind of really stiff. So I'm going to ream this one some more. Um, so you're going to need a reamer. So first, you know, uh, reamers that I learned about were these ones that you can buy on eBay or anywhere. These uh, adjustable uh, reamers. Usually they have four to six blades. Um, I started using this, but it's it's too uh, it bites too much. It's really hard to use. I mean, it'll work. Um, you can make it work, but what I found works a lot better is uh, this kind of reamer. Um, I don't even really know if they make them anymore, but you can still get used ones. In fact, you probably want a used one because the new one's probably a few hundred bucks. But it's a 12 blade, and this one happens to be a spiral cut uh, reamer. So it just goes in there really smooth and just takes off a really tiny amount at a time. And, and uh, it's called an expansion reamer. Uh, not, it's not a, adjustable. This one's an adjustable. You can actually change the size by moving these two screws. This one's an expansion reamer, and it can expand by tightening this screw. And the intention of it is to expand it only very slightly, so each time you sharpen it, you can keep the same size. But what I used it for was to take this 1 in 7 16 reamer and turn it into a 37 millimeter metric reamer for my, for my beam. But that, I don't think that's the re a recommended... Uh, actual use for this tool because I think it goes beyond the maximum expansion but I did it anyway it works great <coughs> uh, so I'll show you how, how, how that works so this is really tight so you can see it's like I can't even hardly get it out of here and I put a little Vaseline on there I, that's I, I've heard that that's not recommended because of the because of the grease so I, I switched to uh, uh, because of the, the petroleum uh, base of the grease. So I switched to this other stuff called Silglide. Silglide is uh, silicone based, I guess. Uh, and it's supposedly, this is a really old dirty one, but it says it's safe for rubber and plastic. <coughs> so um, I, I use that now. Um, so this reamer has a pilot. You just run it. Uh, and let me turn this towards the camera. You run it right into the right into the Delrin bushing. You can see the Delrin is already set in place there. And you can see that it starts to get a little tighter. And I'm only taking off like maybe ten thousandths of an inch right now. And so you can feel it. It's a little tight. And so it's got a square end. And you can use a wrench to help you Turn it. But the thing I like about these 12 blade reamers as opposed to those other 4 to 6 blade ones is they don't bite into the plastic uh, because these things are made to cut steel so you have to be really careful with the plastic and it also self-centers really well so you're not going to, you know, that, that, you know that's the, I guess that's the same thing, that's the reason you don't gouge your plastic is because there's so many blades keeping it centered and so you just turn that you know, real slow and push it in real slow depending on how good it, how smooth the job you want. And you just run that in and out. Um, and I'll show you how much debris is on the blades so you can get an idea of what ten thousandths is, uh, how much material gets removed for ten thousandths. But um, I think when we, uh, I'll show you when we put the arm back in, it's going to move. It's still going to be stiff, but it's going to move a lot more freely. Now I have these shock towers, so I'm trying to make it move fairly freely. I think uh, I've heard the infamous, uh, um, one of the infamous qualities of these bushings, and, and, and I guess urethane bushings also, is, is that they have some damping qualities. So some guys don't run shock absorbers, they just rely on these bushings for damping. Um, 
and that's what that stiffness when you turn it is all about it kind of slows down uh, the movement but I don't want to rely I, I don't feel comfortable relying on that in the long run because I think the bushings will start to break in and then it, they'll get looser and looser and pretty soon it's kind of like your shock absorbers will be worn out uh, and I'm pretty sure since uh, the bushings weren't designed to be shock absorbers that they won't provide that function for very long <coughs> so try to be real methodical and take uh, push it in while I'm turning so that I can take off a nice smooth layer of uh, Delrin. I like the Delrin, it's really hard. Um, uh, you can machine it. Uh, I put these bushings on a lathe actually, they had like a little lip on them that was a replacement for um, the gaskets or the seals, the, the torsion arm seals. Uh, but I want to use the real seals because I didn't really trust those because they're hard and they don't seem like they would seal out water and and, and dirt and stuff, so I want to. I, I went ahead and machined that off on the lathe, and made the, the lips compatible now with the with the old style uh, rubber uh, seals for the for the arms. So, just by luck, these happen to be pretty much the exact right length to go all the way in and through the bushing. Uh, Oh, by the way, these bushings are full-length bushings for the entire length of the of the torsion arm. Um, that makes the hole have to be a little bit um, bigger because uh, <coughs> it has to be perfectly aligned. And then if you've done welding or anything on your beam, the, sometimes the the hole, especially this one, was cut near the towers, isn't exactly aligned so you know by a few thousandths and so you make up for that by by making the hole since the since the hole won't be perfectly straight it's just I'm suspecting it's a tiny bit larger than it has to be <clears throat> and that's the other thing before you put the bushings in you've got to really make sure the inside of the beam is smooth because the originals, there's only one on each end. There's only a bushing on the inside end and a, and a needle bearing on the outside end. And so uh, the, between those two isn't necessarily, you know, in good condition. Uh, it was more of a grease channel for the, for, the, for the two rather than a smooth uh, bearing seating surface. And so I just went in there with a grinder and like I had to weld this uh, this uh, damper mount back on because somebody cut it off. And then I had some penetration in there where you could see the little drips of metal. And I had to grind those off before I put the, the Delrin in. Uh, so we're almost all the way through here. And you want to run this as far through as you can because when you do the expansion it's not like the, one of the advantages of these is that when you adjust it, the blades come out parallel, exactly parallel, whereas the expansion reamer kind of expands from the center, so the center is a bulge compared to the sides, which is not ideal, but it's good enough for, you know, this is what we're doing here, we're not machining the steel or anything, so, so the precision of the bearing is uh, much less dependent on the exact size of the hole. So here's the, uh, the reamer after I pulled it out. Um, you can see the amount of debris kind of uh, all around the center because like I said there's a bulge in the center. Um, and uh, I put, the, I put the, the arm back in and you can see now I don't have to wrestle with the whole beam. I can uh, just use two fingers to, to move the, the torsion arm. So that's uh, that's reaming the that's reaming the bushes for bushings for uh, for your VW uh, front beam. Thanks for listening.